We are live on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook page and the Facebook group. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's uh, Flipping R. Mm-hmm. What number is this? And this is show number 69. I have uh, Adria here with uh, the mini Adria. And Renika won't be here this week. She'll be back with us next week. So, boom. So I'll turn it over to AP. Hi, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us on this wonderful Thursday. As Ty mentioned, you have myself, Adria, and mini me, Mickey, who's going to assist us today, who wants to jump into wholesaling real estate, as I hope you do as well. First and foremost, before we go any further, want to give a huge congratulations on the beautiful Miss Patricia and our newest member of our wholesaling group brought to you by our admin, Crystal. She had a beautiful baby girl. So everyone clap your hands, give her a warm congratulations to her bundle of joy. And as we know, she's not recuperating. She's somewhere in this wild world of the internet, and we'll probably hear from her real soon. But congratulations to you and your family, Crystal, on your bouncing baby girl. Um, we are going to jump right on into it. You ask the questions, I read the questions, and Ty gives the answer. A um, little bit here. You going to read some questions, too? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, as soon as we get ready, keep in mind, we are live across all um, social media. We're on Instagram, we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're in our Facebook group, which you do need to join, which is Wholesaling Real Estate with the Flipman. And I'm going to mention it. Um, Ty introduced last week his Starter Signs kit package, which he made available. The No Excuses Bundle. No excuse has 100 signs for you, also gives you his ebook, which will jumpstart your wholesaling career. And guess what? Sold out. More coming to you. If you're interested, make sure you visit the website, which is uh, startersigns.com. Startersigns.com. That's simple enough. Startersigns.com. Go there. And um, if you missed it the first round, don't worry. Just put in your information and you can jump in on the deal um, on the next go. But go ahead and giving some shout outs. I see you on Instagram. Noble, Green Q, Ray Murray, R. Diddy, Johnny Blaze. I see you. And Carlos Offroader. Hey, it's my turn. This is all from YouTube. Cedric, Marjorie, and no, you can't be commenting and on the show. You got to pick a side. What side you going to be on? Yeah, let's not worry about that. All right, and Jen Wu. Hey, Jen. All right, Ty, are you ready? Uh, I'm still doing some technical diff technical stuff. Yeah. Hey, guys, and we are using another software for Facebook. So if you could, make sure you give us a little feedback, no negativity, positivity on whether that is working or not um, for you. We typically don't have any errors on our end, but just still wanting to know. Let me jump right into the group because I actually wasn't logged in. And let's see who's chit chatting and talking over here. First up, Zia Mora Martinez from Tampa, Florida. Let's see here. You say you're just starting and you're using Dealulator to find sellers. What do I do first? Find sellers or buyers, and then what? So Hmm. I see that question posted a lot in the group. People ask, do I build my buyers list or do I go and find a motivated seller first? Um, you might get mixed responses, but since we're here for Ty. Well, um, both work, but I'm always under the theory and you'll see once you get into the business, finding a deal is generally harder than finding a buyer for a deal. If I said it uh, one time, I said it a thousand. It is not hard to give away money. I thought I was getting a cue there, but she wasn't paying attention. And so um, what I simply mean by that is that um, um, they said they can hear and all this stuff. Okay, yeah. 
All right. So, but uh, what what I uh, mean by that is that uh, uh, finding someone to give you fifty thousand dollars is a lot harder than harder than you trying to give away fifty thousand dollars. Someone is trying to give away fifty thousand dollars to a buyer. That's easy. Someone trying to get someone to give them fifty thousand dollars in equity in their piece of real estate. That's hard. Just use that as a number. So focus on finding the deal with your sellers, in my opinion. All right. There you go. Sellers first, but no wrong or right. No wrong reason to it. Just do something. Something is better than nothing. Karen, I see that you say said that you submitted the sign book request last week. Submit it again. Again, there was only a limited amount for the first go round. Karen, I most definitely hope you get in on this um, second round. And Karen joins us from Sacramento, California. Um, hello, Dwayne Wright. We are well. I hope you are well as well. I think how many times have I said well? Um, let's see here. Coach Stem 601 we're waiting on a survey to come back with approval from a signed buyer. Closing is supposed to be tomorrow. How long does it take for a survey to happen? And what happens with our closing date on the 31st? Um, why are they getting the survey? Um, sometimes you may need that uh, at the buyer request that I had one. Um, I had a, uh, a buyer that wants, he, had to re he requested that on a, uh, a, a lake house that he, that I wholesale to him. And uh, he just wanted to know what the boundaries are. They, you know, they were not distinguished out there. And uh, the people that were selling the, the property, uh, it was like three, three lots, you know, right, right next to each other and uh, two houses on two of the lots and the one he was buying. So he just wanted to know what was his property. And so they, it wasn't identified. So um, he had a survey done. So it took time to get that done. Well, I had to help him find someone to survey it, which was, you know, odd enough. So, but it's like that sometimes. All right, Gijmo, hopefully that answers your question as well. Gijmo wants to know why would you would need a survey. Slade Marie from Philly. Are there anyone from Philly that I can link and network with for wholesaling? Slade Marie, if you're not a part of the wholesaling real estate with the Flipman on Facebook, please make sure you join and put that question out there. I am quite sure there are plenty of subscribers um, here um, that are from the Philly area that would love to partner up with you and, you know, possibly JV, give you some pointers or whatever the case may be. So that's most definitely an option. Um, Delanio Miller wants to know, is it too aggressive to knock on the door of an absentee owner after you sent them a letter or before you send a letter? So door knocking on well, absentees. Well, yeah, it's always uh, going to be an option. Something is better than nothing. Uh, you can get more done by reaching out to them through either cold calling and or mail, uh, direct mail. Uh, but it's something that's going to be better than nothing. Um, it just is going to be limited on the number of people you can reach out to when you just door knock, you know. So, but if you don't have the funds to do one of one of the other two options that I mentioned, then you know you you got to go with what with what works best. Okay, where's my Facebook? Oh, my bad. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm sorry. That's YouTube. Okay. That's YouTube. What's this one? Thank you. Hello, Bruce Henry, Denise Favors. Good evening. And Shante Underwood, you're going to watch a little bit later. That's cool. You shopping. What you shopping? Oh, you said it's stopping right when you're talking live. I'm sorry. Rennie's not with us this evening, Eric. Um, she will join us next week. Um, but she is most definitely still available to each and every one of you if you need to reach out to her in regards to funding your buying holes or rebuilding your credit or any funding type deals. Her name is Renikia Williams, and she is available across all social media platforms, her first and last name. Just look her up. Um, let's see here. That's right, Crystal. It's not hard to give away money at all. Let's see here. Scrolling down. Uh, huh. Y'all ain't saying nothing on Facebook. Marcos Valdez, newbie looking to network with other investors in Chi-Town. 
again, Marco, same to you. Join the Facebook group, put that out there. Surely someone would be happy to get with you. Now going to Instagram. That was a pretty lengthy question there. Let me see how I missed it. Hmm, it's not pulling up for me. I'll have to look at that. Do Judy Lucas wants to know, do I register my business name and EIN number before I begin wholesaling? Also, where do I search for a title company? Two things right there, Judy, that just really shouldn't be on the number one of your list of getting started wholesaling. Things that need to be done, but not number one. Um, what do you think, Ty? If you have the resources to do it, yeah, you want to do that, but don't let that prevent you from getting starting to generate leads. Some people don't have the money to uh, do um, any form of marketing or advertising and setting up setting up their their business entity. As far as looking for a title company, there's no need to look for a title company. Uh, if you got a buyer and seller in place, signing on the contract, getting a deal closed is going to be fairly easy. Plus. Your buyer, a lot of times, will dictate where and who you close with, so you'll be wasting your time to doing that. And a lot of times, when you call in these places, they're going to discourage you because you don't know who you get on the phone. Number one is, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. You need a real estate license. That's one of the five mistakes that, on one of my more popular videos that I say newbies should avoid, is calling around the title companies. It's not needed to start. Okay. Um, Ginger G wants to know, what does a successful investor do for health care or their taxes? Now, I know um, if you have any questions and have a questions for a CPA, Crystal, our admin, would be a good option for you to reach out for. She can answer questions in regards to that. But as far as taxes, we do advise you to contact your personal tax preparer or a CPA can suggest just know that that's tied normally says that is a good problem to have, to have money that you need to pay taxes on. And as far as your health care, um, that again would be a personal call. There's so many options out there to pay for pay private for insurance. You got to pay for it, but you know, whether it's what it's called Obamacare or a private through uh, health insurance, Cobra. Cobra, whatever it may be called, you're going to need it. Um, but again, that's something that's going to be personally dear to yeah, you. That's one, that's one of the trade-offs, not yeah. to cut you off, babe, but that's one of the trade-offs of, um, you know, being self-employed. It's just going to be an expense. It's going to be more expensive than what you're used to on a job where you may only have to pay nothing so from some zero to maybe a couple hundred dollars a month or some people a couple hundred dollars a pay period. You know, it may cost you a thousand or fifteen hundred, but you know, that's going to be the trade-off, you know, depending on how many people you're trying to cover uh, and so on. So I just wanted to, if you want to look at that as a negative, then it would be a negative. But I, I just think that's one of those good problems if you can afford to pay a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars if they cost you that much for health insurance. So. Okay, we're a few minutes into this show on this Thursday and wanted to make sure that you know that we are live now. But if you still happen to miss us, we are available shortly after this show airs. It can be viewed again on YouTube and in addition, streams live on, not live, but streams on where? Podcast. Oh, yeah, on um, uh, iHeartRadio, which I need to update that. And uh, iTunes for, for Apple devices, but with, with iTunes, I, I mean, I already use Apple devices or Android. But FlipmanPodcast.com is where you can access that. Oh, and don't forget, you can get my free one-page contract at FlipMan.net. And um, we forgot about uh, people that wanted to uh, <clears throat> make some money from the affiliate program. We hadn't mentioned that in the last couple of weeks, so... Uh, what is it called? Um, FlipMyEbook.com. Mm -hmm. If you want to make some extra cash, flip my ebook. We split the um, profit. Matter of fact, you get a little more than me on that. And uh, I don't know who you know. You may have a large uh, group or following on Facebook or Instagram. So you split half of whatever the profits are on that. So FlipMyEbook.com. CC, are you with me? Are you riding? That's CC on Instagram. Yes, we have a Facebook group. I just said it like three times. Wholesaling real estate with the flip man on Facebook. Join that group, CC. Um, next question coming from Instagram. Hello, guys. Would you consider wholesaling a house with severe fire damage? The numbers just have to work. Um, when you say severe, at some point, it's just going to have to be a proper uh, 
a, a, a tear down or demolish a job. So uh, it just depends, you know, if it's a, a, a property that severely fine, uh, uh, burned or fire damaged in a $60,000 neighborhood, when I say 60000 I mean that's what it'll price for an extra condition, then it, it's not going to be working. You know, it just needs to go down. But if it's in a $200,000 neighborhood, it may take a hundred grand to get it back going, you know, but that's still a deal. It may take one twenty, but that's still be a deal. So if you can get it cheap enough, assuming so, or it just depends on the numbers. Still, those are just still repairs. It just normally the repairs go up tremendously on fire damage. All right, on the Facebook group, Red Face Property, Wagwan, Ala Ala Ala. He must be a Jamaican man. Oh, love it. Didn't even think I would know how to say that. I think I said it right. How are you doing? As well as, hey, Miss Mrs. Jones, Tanya Cleese, Dominique Coolidge, and Elena Williams. Patty Rivas has a question, says, hi, hi, I'm brand new to this business. I'm located in the East Bay, Northern California, and I'm looking to someone to partner up work, partner up to work my first deal. Where would you recommend to start the process? When you say partner up to work a deal, partner up to do what? Yeah, you got to partner up to do what? Patty, what do you want to do? Well, what do you need a partner for? Do you and have and the reason I ask that is because this business, you don't need a partner in reality, unless you're married to one or whatever, but in reality, you don't need a partner. So uh, maybe I'm not understanding what, what you're asking. But if you could add on to that question. All right. So I will mm -hmm. look for you to... Um, follow up on that, Patty. Um, Dominique, when you contact a seller's relative and they say the person has passed, do you proceed to get the deal and how do you approach it? Well, yeah, you want to find out who's the owner now. If someone owns it, hopefully it's not air property and that was a will that was probated. It was executed before the person passed and so it'll have an executor and that's the person that's going to be the decision maker. So, uh, you just have to do your due diligence to see who's the actual owner now, who who has the actual, who has principal sellable rights to this property. Hopefully, it's not multiple individuals. All right, Kenneth Duke Paget is Birmingham, Alabama, a tough wholesaling market. Uh, no, Birmingham is large enough. If you're doing your mar a proper amount of marketing, um, you you can do deals. You can make a good living. All right, Kenneth, there you have it. A lot of cities like that, though, man. Denise Favors, and this is coming from Facebook. How would you wholesale a deal with a mortgage? Example, an expired listing owner or uh, <laughs> owner owes 60K, comps in the area ranging from 260 to 280. Home was listed for 175 by a previous agent, not sure why it didn't sell, and I'm an agent in the ATL. Um, sounds on the surface like it would be something good, but as long as what? Yeah, it seems like, um, yeah, on the surface, it, but you'll need to get it less than that 175K. Um, but because it has a mortgage, that doesn't mean anything. Um, say the number that you need to make the deal work is 100. That means at closing, instead of the seller getting 100, they would get 40, which is 100. Subtracting sixty thousand leaves forty thousand. It just it's paid off at closing. Okay, so as long as the mortgage is paid off at closing, the amount that your deal is for is more than that. That's it's still a deal. So I understand you saying you might you're wanting to figure out why it didn't sell if it was like that big of a difference between the selling price and the comps. It might be an issue with the house, and maybe want to follow up on that. But good luck with that, Denise. Sounds like you have a deal. Um, let's see here. Still on Facebook, we have John Tay says, I have 600 signs. Oh my goodness. I want to put them in neighborhoods. Is that a good idea? Um, well, yeah. Um, you, you want to, you want, whenever you're putting out signs, you're going to do a combination of places. You're just looking for the most visibility as possible and putting them within neighborhoods. The, the main thing is you're placing them where they, they will stay up, you know, for a long period of time. You put out a hundred signs or 200 signs. You would like to think that at least 125, 150 of those stay up at least a month, you know, cause 
they're going to all eventually come down in, in, in most cases. So the most important thing is figuring out where you already see signs and, and pick it back off of that. I know everybody wants to be alone when your signs are the only one there, but there's a reason why signs are not in certain areas. In most cases, abandoned signs are nothing new or whatever. So the first thing you want to do is just scout out in your market whether you already see signs. And sometimes you have to get outside of your comfort zone, the area that you normally you know live and work or with those there. You may not see ever see any depending on where you live. So the main thing is just figuring out where they are. So within neighborhoods, some main drags, you just don't want to go crazy on main street because it makes it easy for you to be a target to get them pulled down. Uh, just be a little, just think outside the box. I want to be visible, but invisible. And uh, the bank drive through fast food drive through drugstore drive throughs and a couple in some uh, Target, Walmart, shopping centers of that uh, nature, because normally they're pretty large. Um, off of freeways, if you have a, 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 a interstate with a lot of exits, you want to do that. So there's this combination of things you'll do. All right, Jin Wu has a very important question. Mm -hmm. What do you eat? Right, guys, right? Like my mama watched the videos and she was like, why do you want that chewing gum? Don't go on that live chewing gum no more. So his, I don't have any gum, but oh. you get to eat a whole bag of chips. Oh, I eat that good. But, um. Cheetos? She's saying it's sponsored what by Cheetos. It? I'm not getting a dime a quarter. <laughs> Hey, and uh, Pringles, you know what I'm saying? So a poor choice of snack, not yeah. healthy at all. She oh, picked it out. Well, I had some muscadines earlier. Which one is the green ones? Muscadines. I had muscadines earlier. Some of you all may not know what those are. And scuffanongs. Those were southern grapes, muscadines, and scuffanongs. Scuffanongs. Grapes. Yes. Yeah. Vine grapes, they wild vine thing grapes. They come out, they, they bloom or available to eat normally in August through late September, yeah. basically. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Looks like yeah. ivy leaves. Beautiful thing. Wonderful. Mm. Yep. Yep. Uh, must buy wine. Mm -hmm. Almost better than swine. Okay. <laughs> Black Sugar wants to know Have you ever heard of Dill Machine and is it good to use Dill Machine when driving for dollars? I've heard of it, and I'm on the email list for some reason, so I don't never look at the emails, but um, uh, it's an app, I think, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I've heard of it. Um, um, I, I, in fact, I talked to a guy down in South Florida um, that's supposed to um, get me down there uh, to help him with his wholesale, but he's already a flipper. He's pretty successful at flipper, but he wants to our wholesale and he was mentioning something about Dill Machine, but to answer your question, I know nothing about it. But we do know something about Dillulator. Dillulator.com, right. Right, right, right. Yeah. right? Yes. Dillulator.com. Go to the website, sign up for your free five-day trial. There is a monthly subscription fee, but if you're serious about this wholesaling thing, this is a great tool, tool to have. It does nothing for you if you're not using it. If you're using it and using it daily, you'll see how uh, well it works for you. And Stefan Moore, always, Stefan, always coming through with the correction. That's what I said, Stefan. God, Lee. He talking about some, well, let me see. Oh, you just brought it out. He talking about some. Green ones are the scuffinongs and the purple ones are the muscadines. What did we say? We said that. I don't know. He going to roll the beautiful bean footage back. Scuffinongs are green and muscadines are black. That's that's right. That's wrong. You that's said. right. That's what I said. Scups are green. Musket. Anyway, we ain't gonna argue about this today, Stefan. We're not gonna do this today, Stefan. At all. Mm -mm. No, we're not gonna do this. Um, Marcherie has an idea. She wants to know: Have you tried flyers on windshields in areas where bandit signs can't be placed? And if you have, were you successful? Um. Well, I, I, it's, it's not, I've done a lot of stuff, you know, and um, I've tried that and with zero results, but you have to think about it. You have to put out a lot of flyers and you have to be consistent with it. Um, I'm always side on something better than nothing, but whatever you're going to do, you got to be consistent and dedicated to it, which I know can be hard, um, but um, it's tough, man. <laughs> that, that's tough, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you're getting ran off a lot of times. You're doing it in parking lots like Walmart, Target, or whatever. 
Um, so, again, something's better than nothing. Just how many people, like someone asked me, that a flyer is better than banner signs. I said, well, can you reach 30, over 30,000 people in one day with flyers? And they, they, they just laugh out loud with the response. No comparison. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Well, you can. That's 30,000 daggone flyers, though. <laughs> That's 30,000. One doggone. bandit sign <laughs> can reach that many people. Yeah, one bandit people. sign can reach that many people. Eyeballs, you know, so that's that's the difference. One oh. band is there. All right. Well, Stefan, send me some of that wine then. You're right. I'll concede. Hey, LL and hey, Charles. I see y'all on YouTube. Let's see here. Crystal uses flyers and says it works well for her. So it's one of those things that something is better well, than nothing. Well, see, she's in the tax business. That's that's everybody. Everybody didn't own real estate. And then the ones that do own real estate, majority don't want to sell it. So you're in a business where your flyers touch everybody, basically. You know what I'm saying? If you put 100 flyers out, 80 of those people are going to need taxes, not saying they're going to do business with you, but that's a high percentage of the people that you're targeting. Where you put 100 flyers out, 50 of them own real estate, uh, some real estate, 50 of them don't. Out of that 50 that do own real estate, two of them may want to sell, probably zero. Or whatever so and then if you do want to sell they want to sell it probably doesn't make sense for you so it just depends on the business all right let's see here kenneth duke wants to know is there a rule of thumb when paying yourself how do i know a safe percentage to put aside for taxes marketing and payments CPA. to myself cpa mrs crystal <laughs> three, three, three words for you cpa three letters words words technically yeah <laughs> But what's, never mind. I've been corrected way too many times today already. I'm not going to do it. Um, Off-Roader wants to know, hey, Ty, what do you suggest doing to get more calls with a very small market like Reading, Pennsylvania? I don't know what how, what's the size of that. What, what do you call small? Mm -hmm. Well, what's the population? What's the greater area population for Reading, Pennsylvania? Not particularly sure. Off roader follow up. J Rock is from Baton Rouge on Instagram and says, I'm kind of scared to put my bandit signs up. What should I do? Scared money don't make no money. There you go. We may, you know, I can't I can't remove that fear from you. You know, it's one of those things I told you not to drive. You know, you know it's the speed limit 45, but you're driving 55. So, you know, there's definite ordinances against it or whatever. But you see signs, I'm sure you see signs in your market. Again, just put them where other signs exist. Normally, you're, not, you're going to be good or whatever. So, but you know, that's not the only way that you can uh, market uh, for, 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 uh, for buyers, I mean, for sellers. Um, but if you go to dailylater.com, not to toot it on, but you'll probably get another time before it's night over. Um, but I have several videos there that I think it will be useful for you on how you can use that along with uh, cold calling and our direct mail to our target properties. But, you know, bandit signs are very inexpensive. It can be very, very effective if done correctly. Okay, so I'm looking at Denise's question. Denise's question was, I guess, in regards to deal machine. Okay, so the way it works is obviously she drives for dollars and puts in the information and then she has a team leader that could possibly make her deal or not. And her question was, um, thank you, I asked about deal machine because that's what I'm using as we speak, but how will you know if your team leader closes on a deal? They say they will email you and then you get paid, but how will I know, how will anyone really know? So basically you're driving for dollars, you're finding homes, bird dogging, Bert, Bert, whatever, and giving them the address, and they tell you if that address turns into a, a potential deal, they'll send you a percentage of the profit. How do you know? How would you ever know? What if they tell you that, yeah, you submitted that address, but somebody else submitted the address too? So I'm, that don't sound good to me. Like, you can be doing this for yourself, right? Is that like a trust thing or, or what? Yeah, I, I would have to understand it. I'm sure some videos on YouTube to explain it in more detail. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, Denise, it, it, you would have to do a little bit more research on that whole deal machine thing. We're just not familiar enough to give you any pros or cons on it. But I will tell you this, if you're driving for dollars and if you're joining us tonight, and if you watch the over 280 plus videos that Ty has, takes advantage, take advantage of asking questions in the Facebook book group. There's no reason for you to be driving for dollars and taking those addresses and giving them to somebody else to make a potential deal. You can do that yourself. There's no reason for you to be getting a percentage of something that you could be getting the whole amount of. I'm not saying that there's something wrong with partnering with anyone or JVing or um, you know, having somebody assist you in finding buyers or leads, but there's no reason that somebody's making 10 grand and you're getting $500 for giving them an address. I mean, that just doesn't, that doesn't make sense. But if that's what you want to do, don't get me wrong. $500 is better than $0, but there's just so much more. I think with the information that we provide for you, well, I don't provide you nothing, but the information that Ty and when Renika is here provides for you that you can't be making this money yourself, honey. You got this, Denise. I got you. Um, let's see here on YouTube, what contract to use when trying to get a property under contract when dealing with a realtor and a buyer? Just before I let Ty answer that question, just letting you know, Ty does make his one page contract totally free available to you guys. He's been using it for 15 plus years. It gets the job done. The A to B, the B to C It's available, flipman.net or this text contract at 313131. But I guess in his question, this is Jugnot, and particularly dealing with the realtor, you're more than likely going to have to use the realtor's contract. They're not going to let you bring in your own, right? Um, no, nah, yeah, the realtor's going to want to use their own contract for sure. All right. There we have it. Um, let's see here. Sherry LaFall says, good evening. I'm a newbie in Seattle. When doing estimated repairs for wholesaling, will we concentrate more on, wow, it just went away. Let me go back to the question. Sorry there. You just took it down. Did you take it down? What? It just totally went away. Anyway, when doing estimated repairs for wholesaling, would you concentrate more on obvious visual repairs, examples like a hole in the wall, leaking ceilings, um, opposed to someone who's doing estimated repairs for a fix and flip? Well, for wholesaling, you, you, you have to think in terms of the uh, potential investor, which everybody's going to have their own level of repair that they're going to do. So it's just a general number is what you need. But it, you have to think in terms of a fix and flip. It may be a rental area, so it's not going to, the repairs may not be as extens extensive. So it's just going to depend on, um, it's just going to depend on the, um, um, what type of property or area you think you're dealing with. It may be a combination of, normally if it's a flip area, it's going to be a rental area also. Sometimes it's a rental area, but it may not be a great, area to flip to a family that wants to get a mortgage and, and live there, so. Okay. Um, hey, Rita Roberts, you wave and we waving back at you. Um, Soli says, I'm in the embryo phase of the wholesaling business. Do you think I should send a thousand postcards worth $762? Do you think this is worth it? First of all, we haven't mentioned it, and I think we didn't mention it last week, but we do have mail to flip Dot com. It is a service available to you all that uh, is postcards. It's a mailing service. Uh, Ty has a postcard in his hand. What this company does is if you go there with your list um, of target areas that you're going for, it places the picture of the home on the postcard and gives the owner a little bit of information on why you're interested and that they need to call you today. It is a very good way to get your postcards not thrown in the mail. Um, I know you mentioned solely that you had a thousand postcards. Where'd you get them from? What did they say? I would tell you to visit mail to flip if you haven't already bought them, but is it worth it? And I, um, I did a video earlier this week, how you can use a uh, video later, AK prop stream to uh, create your own because with mail to flip, 
uh, using that option, you have to send a minimum of 100. Uh, generally speaking, you want to probably send a lot more than that if you're going to do a bulk mail out. But whenever you're just driving for dollars or maybe you want to target some landlords or whatever, probate or whoever, you only maybe send 20 or 30 or maybe one. But you can go in there and create your own postcard with a picture of that person, the person that owns the property, a picture of that property there. And I show you how to use D later to, to do that, you know, so and it only costs 64 cents for the smaller postcard, which are four and a half by six and for the larger, which are five and a half by eight and a half, uh, 74 cents. So, so boom. So just go to dig later. I put the video there uh, on the main page and you can check it out. Kenneth, you said you're trying to get to deal you later and it does not come up. You spelled it right. Deal you later.com. I'll check it a little but after the show. In fact, Ty will probably check it right now. But yeah, it's D E A L U L A T O R, Um, Jason, it varies in price on Mail to Flip. Visit the site and it will give you a uh, um, uh, piece price, per piece price, or a bulk price. Um, but visit Mail to Flip. And Kenneth, we're on deal later.com now and it's working so try it again um just do you later okay that's you were supposed to scroll while she did that and she was gonna go with the scroll you didn't want to do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my I, i've been practicing i cannot do that i don't know how to make the little card be sounds so oh, oh, yeah. she just we're not talking about that. I'm not going to try it on the show. I promise. Anyway, um, LL Cool J, you've been with us enough to know that, but thank you for answering that question. He wants to know, is virtual wholesaling possible? Of course it is. Um, it just really just boils down if you got someone on the ground to, um, to uh, represent your interests, whether it's another wholesaler, someone that you know, relative a friend or maybe a real estate agent, but you got to have someone there to represent your interests. It's as simple as whenever a seller, a buyer goes out to view a house and you don't have a lock box or whatever the seller has to be there to show it, or it may be occupied. You need someone there to make sure they're mediating, letting the buyer know, Hey, I'm wholesaling this, any negotiations on price go through me. You know, you just want to know general questions about the property through the buyer. So yeah, it's, it's, it's possible more difficult but it is possible for sure okay how do you protect yourself when you are signing a contract to another buyer and the wholesaler possibly that's what your contract is for mm -hmm. Can you any questions? Any questions? okay um yes text contract to 313131 to get that free contract that's it in the YouTube. Okay, non weathers. I'm gonna go ahead and read your question. We we answer this I think every week. And the question is, is it illegal or frowned upon to get sellers to break contracts with realtors? Is it wrong of me to offer sellers that have been with company for months a cash offer to free them? Well, I technically that you're not on the hook for anything like that from my understanding of it. Um, I don't know if that's a, a, a way you want to go about doing business because in most cases, they gain some confidence with the realtor. And a lot of times, if you're going to reach out to them like that, I can, I can assure you, if you reach out to uh, 10 properties that are listed, um, probably seven of them, going to, the person that's going to call you is not going to be, they're not going to be the, uh, the owner, it's going to be the agent, but maybe those three, those three will be, you know, they want to listen and talk to you. So maybe, you know, the numbers will work out for you. But I would just want to suggest making a habit of that. Now, the second deal I ever did was a, a seller contacted me. And uh, she was in the process of canceling her contract. And because um, she just thought that realtor number one wasn't doing anything, but he had overpriced her house. She, uh, he had it listed for 49000 That's what the realtor had it listed for. I got it on the contract for 9000 but bam right right over there in powder leaf for you people in birmingham okay i know what it is let's see here kmd wants to know 
Um, well, Candy says, I just partnered with an REIA mentor. He asked me to sign a contract for 15% off of all my deals for the first year, and he will help mentor me for any deals I have. Have you heard of this before, and is this common? Okay. Um... So is it safe to say that if you want somebody to mentor you, hold your hand, help you with every deal, like a true blue mentor, you're either going to pay an upfront flat fee to learn or either they might say hey every deal you make you're going to give me a certain percentage if you can't play the upfront fee so totally not unreasonable right but there's no guarantee ever that you're going to make a deal that you're going to complete a deal have a deal um so what's the answer what's that now just lay me turn it right now the she he signed a contract to give a mentor 15% off of every deal he does within the next year. And is that common? That's not, I wouldn't say it's common, but that 15%, it, 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 if they're going to teach you a lot about the business, you know, you'll be able to eat off of that one year paying them for a long time. Um, agents pay brokers sometimes more than that, you know, so, and, and that's for years. <laughs> so, <laughs> And, and, and the broker, a lot of times they teach them nothing. They just providing a platform for them, for them to exist. So yeah, I, I don't I don't think that's a bad deal if, if that's the option that you want to go with. That that can mean a lot of money or whatever. But again, it can be worth it. You know, if you can eat off and feed the people you care about. You know, beyond that year. So yeah, go with it. Is that your own logic? Okay. Um, we have a question from on. Ty, did you see the question? What was the question, Robert? And the volume go down where you can't hear. Um, this is on YouTube, but they can't hear. Oh, YouTube. Mm, they said the volume just went down. I'm not particularly sure. Huh. Okay, so let's see here. Back to the virtual question. Someone else tagged into that, and I know you kind of answered that, but what LL and it looks like Latoya as well wanted to know um, on virtual and virtual wholesaling, because of their lack of, well, she says, I'm starting the business due to my lack of availability because of work. I'm not in a position to quit my job right now. And LL just wants to know, hey, is it possible to do this thing to never see the buyer, them never see you, just totally online? Hey, this is the picture of it. And I guess, yes, it can be done. If you were dealing with somebody overseas, you'd never see them. They would never actually see the property. It's a trust thing. But is that for newbies? And is that really what the bulk of your, could you do it all that way? That the buyer and the seller never see each other? Or you Just never virtual see wholesaling, period. Like well, you, you never leave yeah. the comfort of your home. Um, It's possible. That, that's possible. Um, like I say, you just got to have people making sure you have people in place to represent your effort. You know, I, I know people want that and that's, and it's possible again, I'm just letting you know, it's harder. It's just harder to do it that way. Okay. Um, heart and soul productions. Can you speak about wholesaling pre foreclosures? Um, I could use a little more info on that. What's, what's the word? What, what, what are they asking? Um, Wholesaling pre foreclosures. Well, okay, it first starts with it, it needs to be a deal. So sometimes a pre foreclosure, that just simply means someone's behind in payments and they started receiving the notices from a lender um, saying, um, they started um, receiving notices from a lender saying, hey, you know, you need, you need to pay us or you're going to have to go or whatever. So um, so if the equity is already there for the deal to make sense, then it's just a normal deal at that point. And they just, the, the lender gets paid off. A lot of times they're not and they owe more than what makes sense to you. And so that's when uh, a short sale is uh, initiated. And so each lender is going to have their short sale process. So it can be done, but uh, on top of that, you got to have the right type of buyer ready to go because they're not going to just, just let you assign it. 
you may be able to double close it or whatever. But um, it can be done. Just understand dealing with short sales when you're dealing with a lender, lender. You may wait 90 days just to get an answer back, an offer back, or a price that they will accept. And it may not be a price that you can do. And you, you spend 90 days dealing with this. So just keep that in mind. I like to get a pros and cons. It can be done, which is the pro. But the con is it can be a, a tremendous time waster. So um, yeah, I don't have the patience for it personally. But I know people, when they hear the word foreclosure, it's like, oh, it's a great deal. I'm the only one that knows about it. <laughs> oh, well, I, I, but it's just it's, it's totally opposite. Of it. There are easier deals out there than that. Okay, Robert, welcome. And his question is, I'm looking to be a bird dog, and I do have an investor wanting houses. I've seen houses on Facebook. Is it wrong to contact the seller of those houses for my investors? He said, he said what now? To contact sellers on Facebook, through Facebook. No, right? The number's there. You can give them a call. Or if you yeah, yeah. Sale by owners, yeah, yeah. If their number's there, yeah, you know, yeah. Yes, most definitely. Yeah, I mean, you're if you're a bird dog, your whole thing is to find a potential deal for your investors. If you're looking on Facebook and you see homes for sale, now granted they may be listed with a realtor, but I'm thinking you're talking about Fizgo's. Um, so give them a call, ask them. Same same thing applies. You know, how much you want to sell it for? Is that the least amount you'll take? All same game. Yeah, that number's there. It's fair game. Um, let's see here. On Instagram, I'm from Atlanta, and this is Mo. New to this part of the industry, but not new to real estate. What's the best skip tracing tool while locating sellers? Hey, y'all, get your pens and paper ready, because I see this a ton of times. What's the best skip tracing service? How do I locate owners and all that? So, yeah, you can go in so many different directions based on what you have to, what type of money you can spend spend on it. Um, initially what you'll do, just some simple stuff you can do is for skip tracing. And I, I don't, I guess a lot of stuff must be out there on the internet on it because I get this so much and I, I'm admittedly not the biggest skip trace, but maybe I do it better than what I think I do, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't even know, I'm not even sure, but I know it could be done a lot better than I do do it. But, uh, normally I can find someone when I, I normally want to. Um, but what I'm normally going to do is I'm going to Google the address. I'm going to Google the person's name with their mailing address. I'll just do that off the top. Sometimes it just pops right up. Then you can go to some of the um, uh, free sites like True People Search, anywho, uh, anywho.com, truepeoplesearch.com, I think it is. Even the white pages may pull a number. And then if I want to take it to the next level, um, there's, there's some, uh, well, uh, within the day later, AK PropStream, there's an option there to a uh, to find phone numbers, uh, it's 10 cents per listing, successful listing. Normally, they go, if you put up, if you upload 50 names uh, and the information, it's going to charge for all 50, so that'd be $5. Uh, but then it'll it'll credit you back on, on for the one that they didn't find. So that's another option. Um, then you can get into some of the credit services, but then you have to qualify by being in a certain type of industry. I've never pursued that. Um, and tell us.com, you can look up that person's name and maybe pull a phone number, but if nothing else possible relatives, which you can reach out to them, give them an incentive to, um, to work with you. When I say an incentive, uh, let them know that you, know, you provide their number. And if they buy the pro if you buy the property from that person or that relative that, uh, you'll pay them $500,000, but only after you close the deal. So, um, and that's just what I'm going to normally do. So. But like I said, they can get a lot more detail than that. All right. Um, Gloria, I, I see your question. I'm a, it, Because it's quick and simple, I'm going to read it and answer it. What if the seller doesn't want to get a lockbox? Should the wholesaler buy them themselves? Yes. Are you expecting your seller to basically give you their house a discounted price and go buy a lockbox so they can put the key on the door? Have a lockbox. Great investment. You're going to get it back once the deal is done. Take the lockbox back, put it in your trunk. You can use it for the next deal. Lockboxes vary from 15 to 30 bucks, depending on which one you buy. But yeah, we're not going to ask the seller, a motivated seller, a truly motivated seller who's allowed you to put their house on the contract to purchase their home and ask them to go buy a lockbox. We, we're just not going to do that. 
So yeah, I mean, even if you have to meet your potential buyers there every time, if some sellers don't want you putting a lockbox on their door or on the vacant home, but yeah, that's don't mm -mm, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. just, just go buy one. It, it's an investment. You'll you'll use it again. Yeah, you use it over over again. Yeah, so yeah. don't don't worry about that. Um, Jermaine, Jermaine Grinder, and you're not too late, and I will read your question. Um, you saw a vacant house with red notices that read stop work, about four of them. Have you ever ran into that in anywhere around that? Might be a permit issue. Um, it could have been something from the city. If it was something posted from the city, I think it has to say that it's posted by the city. Um, that's what it sounds like, right? A stop work order on a vacant home. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you get in contact with the owner, you can probably see whether they have begun doing some work on them, their permits were denied, or they were doing work without a permit, and the city comes in and finds them and says, hey, you can't make these additions because you didn't go through the proper channels. That could be it. Um, but that sounds like a, a, a city issue there. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Roderick, you had a question on Facebook. You mentioned, yeah, you understand scared money doesn't make money, but realistically, I think your question was how much money do you have to begin wholesaling? I know we promote this whole business with little to no cash or credit, and that's exactly what we mean, little to no cash or credit. Now, you may not have the money to go buy band designs in bulk. You may not have the money to do the postcards, but you can drive around. You're driving around possibly... Or I don't care if you're riding public transportation, you're going around your city every day. That costs you nothing while you're doing that. Write down the vacant homes that you see the addresses. There are ways to look up the vacant homes without using the paid services. There are free services, even Dilly Later, even though we say it's a monthly subscription. You have five free days. Drive around, ride around for a week. Take all those addresses, take that service, use those five days, find them, give those people a call. At this point, you haven't paid for anything. Your time is, is just that your time. So it's just how much time are you wasting watching TV, sleeping, doing nothing, thinking about how can I change my life? You could be working. So realistically, Roger, you can do this with no money. Does it help to have a jump start? Of course it does. Of course it helps to have a, some money to get some bandit signs, but you can also write letters. We have, the, you know, we say the yellow letters, which they don't have to be yellow. That's just what we're calling them. Um, you can handwrite those. You can type those up and just make a blank form and go to Kinko's maybe for three cents a copy and run a bunch of them off and just write in the addresses and put a stamp. Now I just charge you some money because now you're paying for the copies and the stamps, but we're still talking, what, five bucks? Five bucks, get that espresso coffee from Starbucks this week or today or that Happy Meal. And that's your five bucks for that. So it's just really what you want to do, where you see yourself going in this business. You can do it with nothing, Roderick. I promise you can. Um, of course, it always helps to have a little something to start up with, but zero can turn into zeros in this business. It can, right? Right. Right. Yeah, I answered the question right. Okay, let's see here. You want to ask me? No. Okay, good answer. Ah, uh, let's see here. Maine, you say the audio volume is all. We're almost done for the evening, Maine, so not really going to worry about fixing it too much. Um, What's like, wrong? He says the audio volume is low on our end. We hear you, but have to turn our sound all the way up. So okay. Okay. Not, okay. Not, okay. not sure, because other people are saying they can hear. I apologize, Maine, if that is the issue that you're having. We will work on it. Krishanda Foreman says, hey, guys, I am on my second deal within a two-month period. Thanks for all your help, Ty. Ty, whatever. I have a house under contract that the lady doesn't want me to put up signs, and there's only certain people she wants me to sell to. But I can make about $20,000 off the deal. What would you do? Who are the certain people you can sell to? How does she dictate who yeah, you do or don't sell the yeah, house to? Yeah, and number, and number two, how did that conversation even come about? You are the buyer. That's it. She, that's, that's the only thing she needs to know. You are the buyer. That's what the contract says. Where the money comes from is irrelevant if you can perform. So if you, your conversation with the seller, if I'm understanding you correctly, went off the rails a long time ago. That should have never even been 
uh, an issue on who she can sell it, who you can sell it to or whatever. Again, I, I hopefully I'm understanding what you were saying there. So, uh, so you may need to reel that back to her and let them know I'm buying the house. But after I buy it, I can sell it to whoever I want to. If she didn't want to roll with that, then, you know, she's not motivated enough. You probably don't have, the numbers probably don't work anyway. Okay. None weathers volume black Robert Jones loud and clear. Okay. Do you continue to contact the seller after they've given you their price and it's too high? You don't have a deal. You can put them in your back pocket and do a follow-up. This business oh, is yeah. most definitely follow-ups. Um, but if you don't have a deal, move on. Don't sit there and wait for that that one person to, you know, finally bow down or haggle you, see, you down. So you see this? Mm -hmm. okay. I can. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you so what what do you, what's your answer to that? Yeah, if um if um if the price is too high, which most people that you talk to, it will be. Nothing prevents you from following up with them, see if anything changed because life is a you know what. And um um, you know, the situation is changing now. Hey, they want to sell it at X number, but now they want to sell it at Z number. So that, that may work for you. But that's that's most definite to answer your question. Okay. Um, let me have that postcard. Can't push. KMD, you said, do you have a script or a video on what to say when cold calling properties after driving for dollars? Hey guys, pen and paper time, get your notes out or either come back to this video and record it. We mentioned it earlier that these postcards are available on mail to flip dot com has a pretty little picture of the house on it and has all this information it's the owner's house it's just not any picture it's, it's the, the actual house that you're interested in yeah but kmd's question was a script on cold calling this postcard actually has a good script on it mm -hmm. you ready it says the other day i was driving by your house at one two three four any street and noticed it appeared to be vacant if you have any interest in selling fast, as is, and with zero commissions or closing costs, I would like to buy it. Call me today. 123-456-7890. Again, 123-456-7890. Simple. That's that's all you got to say, KMD. I was driving by your house. It appeared vacant. Can I buy it? I know it's easier said than done because I'm saying it jokingly, half jokingly now. And it's a lot harder when you're actually on the phone and somebody picks up and you get the, hey, how'd you get my number? Why are you calling me? Uh, it's public records. Um, how did you know my house? Was I just told you, I drove by. Uh, how did you get my address? Uh, again, public records. Yeah, I'm interested in selling. How much do you want to give me for? Well, first, I just wanted to see if you were interested. My team and I will follow up with you within 24 hours and give you a price after looking over it. If you have any questions, additional questions, we'll call you back and ask you those as well, but we will call you back with an offer as soon as possible. Thank you for answering my call and letting me know that you were interested in selling. If not, do you have any other properties that you're interested in selling? Come on now, that's the script. What you say? Nice script. That's right, Gloria. It says right there. I'm gonna say it for you one more time. The other day, I was driving by your house at 1234 Any Street and noticed it appeared to be vacant. If you have any interest in selling fast, as is, and with zero commissions or closing costs, I would like to buy it. That can also be your voicemail as well. So hopefully that helps you can be. Keep it short and sweet and simple and to the point. Now, do you think direct mail, bam, such as this, is effective? What postcode? Oh yeah. Um, is it effective? It's very effective. Uh, it, it see direct mail is all about getting someone's attention. You know they're getting all types of mail. Most people sort their mail over the trash can. You're trying to avoid the trash can, and some of these are still in the trash can. But they'd be like, "Wow, who is this? Send a, a postcard, a picture of my house on it. These people are crazy. Let me call them and see what they're talking about." Hello. He well, got be, him on the phone. I should be in Hollywood, shouldn't I? <laughs> okay. 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 Hey, but anyway, uh, so so again, if you're gonna send more than a hundred, uh, a, a great deal of them, 
thin mail to flip. But if you want to create your own, you can get over to Digulate. I have a video that I posted on YouTube, but it's also available. Um, it's also available uh, on the Digulator website. So Digulator.com, and you can see that video on how to create your own, where you can place a picture upside down, a picture of that property. Uh, of the, the property that you're targeting and you send it out to them and only go, going to cost you the 64 cents or 74 cents per piece. Hey man, I, I'm trying to make this stuff possible. Y'all get this bread. You can get it. Okay. You got to do something though. Greedy, greedy. You asked me about what contract do you email for virtual wholesaling? The same contract. We're not going to make this complicated y'all. Kiss. Keep it simple. Simpletons. It's another word that goes after. We just gonna say kiss it. The same contract. You can scan it in. Once you're, the way you get it from us is virtual. There's ways to be able to plug and chug information. I mean, you can do it and just email it to them. Most times, you won't even see the seller or the buyer if you're doing it right. Not on multiple occasions. Once you give them the information that they need, you're gonna be communicating through email, text messages. So yeah, just most definitely. Send send it over. Send it via email, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, Instagram, we're about to close out, but there were like three questions before the live stream went down. If you three users could repost your questions because Instagram does speed up and I miss it, I would like to read those before we close this evening. Also, before we go, mm -hmm. I'm going to point you in the direction of a few websites, as you know, Ty has huh, a plethora of them, but they're all to benefit you. So let's not forget mail to flip or direct mail, the postcards with the actual property that is on there to keep your mail out of the trash. No guarantee is not going to end up in the trash, but more than likely it will not. Dealulator.com, which is aka prop stream, but Dealulator is our version. I use it to search um, those addresses that you pull from well, driving for dollars. I pick it over. I, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Whoa. well, Dealulator does more than help you find who the owns the property, mm -hmm. but you can get build lists for cash buyers, you can build lists for pre foreclosure, something one. Um, mentioned earlier, foreclosures, high equity, vacant properties, free, free and clear auctions, uh, non owner occupied, which is an absentee. Um, you can target multifamily condos, townhouses, obviously single family, which I have a number of videos on the actual site, you know, and I'm just showing you different ways it can be used to make it easier for you to find and to do deals. Now, I'm not going to do deals for you. The idea is to just make it easier for you to do deals. You know, no software is going to do that. If they're telling you that, you need to run. This business still boils down to generating leads, and it's one of the tools that can help you do that, but you're still going to have to talk to sellers, buyer, put the deal together, boom, boom, boom. So, uh, then um, again, we had the uh, startersigns.com. I had mentioned it on a flipping two before, and we got them in. Uh, they only lasted one day, so I'm reing up. So it's going to be a, a few days. And if you're on the alerts list, the text alert list, I'll send out that text, and uh, you have an opportunity to uh, take advantage of those. So it's 100 banded signs plus my ebook on how to flip, how to wholesale three to five houses per month, and your cash or credit will not matter. So uh, make sure that you know what a sign, I'm sorry, startersigns.com, that's startersigns.com and get on the uh, text message alert list. Don't forget about the, um, if you wanna watch my stuff or listen to it, I mean on a podcast or in that format, flipmanpodcast.com. It's available on uh, iHeartRadio and iTunes, so that covers Android and Apple devices. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, same thing on Facebook, join the Facebook group, wholesaling real estate with the Flip Man, back to regular programming. All right, let's see here. Doing our roundabout, asking the last few questions, gonna make it quick and sweet. Are you ready? We should do like a little timer thing, right? How many questions can we ask in 10 seconds? Like you gotta just go fast, just answer, it's gonna be short. Ready, yeah. go. Uh, I guess I gotta read fast. <laughs> Bad idea. Bad idea. Okay, one minute. 
One minute? Yeah, one minute. One minute question roundup. I like that. One minute. Okay, you ready? That's brilliant. Yes. Okay, go. Has Ty ever flipped a property that has been condemned by the city? Uh, have I? I want to say no. Okay. Oh, yeah, we got under the minute on that one. Okay. No. Do you have to put your earnest money with the title company and open escrow before sending it out to your buyer's list? No. No. Okay. Da, 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 da. Do you have a script or a video? We've already done that. We're not going to read that one. Let's see. His direct mail as effective as cold calling. No. Okay. When just starting <laughs> out with wholesaling, how do you deal with houses over 100K, 280K? It doesn't matter. It could be 10 million if, if I can get it for 5 million. Doesn't matter. Okay. How do I come up with the holding fee to put in on the deal you later when putting together a report for the buyer? A holding fee? Uh, I, I have to go back and look at it. I'm, I'm sorry. I hadn't looked at it in a minute. So can't answer that. Pass. Okay. <laughs> I've heard. Time's up. Dang. We got to do two minutes. Wow. That was a, we got that many questions in a minute? Yeah. What you use to, to figure that out? She just counted to 60. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Right. Why you got to rush to get offline? You ain't got nothing to do. We do got stuff to do. Football has started. You don't know. And I, and I forgot to Y'all nobody my... like football. Huh? Okay. Huh? She... She talking now. He talk, spoke that up. Oh. Okay. Um, Jason oh. Toronsko says that I've heard about maybe about the market crashing soon. How will that affect wholesaling and how do we work around that? Well, if people can predict the future, then they, they, they're in the wrong business. Now, we've been in la-la land, which meaning it's been good for a while. No, no question about that. And if things go south, you know, they just do. At the end of the day, people still got to live somewhere and shelter is not free, meaning houses, just since we're talking about that. You just adjust with the times. You know, people still going to rent properties. People still going to buy properties, which means transactions. And as a wholesaler slash investor, you can still be in the middle of those. You just have to adjust with whatever happens. All right. Good night, Eric. I see you there. And what to do with empty lots? Um, tough sale, depending on where they are. If they're in Beverly Hills, I'm sure you can if you get it a good deal, you can wholesale it. But if they're in Silas, Alabama, you, well, you might still better get ready. Now, that's a bad example. If they're in, uh, uh, let me see, Mulga. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> if they're in Mulga, <laughs> then uh, you may have an issue, no matter what price you get it at. Lots of difficult because it's based on speculation speculation and you're going to have a limited number of buyers with those so but you know they can still be anything be wholesale it's just how many buyers do you have or looking for that type of of uh, real estate all right and just to end it out Rolanda I'm gonna tag into your question and we actually answered it in our little speed round that we tried to do that we're gonna do better how do you wholesale houses that are in 100k range hey guys keep in mind not all houses are gonna not all of them are gonna be 40 20 thousand dollar rundown shotgun houses that are still livable don't get me wrong but if you're in california you're not gonna find a forty fifty thousand dollar house even if it is run down the, the, the twenty thousand dollar house here is still 100k in someone like california don't let the price scare you it's a numbers game renikia says it ty says it now i'm saying it's a numbers game if the numbers add up and it is a deal it is a deal i don't care if it's 100k 260k you got a 260 ARV and the seller is willing to sell it for 60 because they're tired of it and they don't care. And then he's like 40 grand in repairs and it's 100 and you're going to put it on the market for worth 20. That's still 140 out there. Don't be afraid of the bigger houses. Don't be afraid of the pretty houses. Don't let the pretty houses fool you. I know y'all think wholesaling is all about the ugly ones. Not necessarily so. Don't let the pretty ones trick you. It could be money in those as well. You agree? A deal is a deal. A deal is a deal. Well... I'm going to wish each and every one of you a safe and happy Labor Day. Monday is a holiday. Travel safely. Get, wish you all traveling grace if you're on the road. Again, huge kisses and, and bubbles and flowers and balloons to Miss Patricia Ann, our bouncing baby girl, our new addition to the Flip family uh, via Crystal. She had a little bit to do with that, just a little bit. And to each and every one of you, today is day one. Do not wait for one day. Day one. Start now. Roll Tide. Football all weekend long. Roll Tide. You don't even have Roll Tide on. You just got a red and white. 
still represents. You still represent. We will see you on the flip side. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> he still represents, huh? <laughs>